All right, next let's take a look at uh, some demographic data by zip code. Um, this is Esri's Diversity Index 2021, the percent change in that index from 2010. And so uh, before we get to the zip code data, what did we do to the base map? We started off with uh, the human geography base map. We added, we went to add layer, and we added this one layer called World Hillshade. And you can see what it brings to the table. It just gives a little visual context for those areas that have um, a bit of terrain that you might want the user to see. And so if I turn then to the layers in this group layer, I've got a zip code layer of my demographic content. So what it looks like is uh, what's the percentage increase or decrease in the diversity index over time. Areas in green had an increase. Areas in yellow had not much change. So kind of in uh, this area of town really wasn't much change. It was, um, oh, this was since the year 2000. Okay, so it was 62 on a scale from 0 to 100, and it, it fell slightly, very slightly, to 60.9 versus some of these areas. The diversity increased from 21 to almost double, 39. Okay, so that's what the subject matter is. Now, what are the effects at work here? You notice that I still see the hillshade in this layer, so in the map. So how'd that happen? Um, the hillshade was added to the base map, and then on this group layer, I've got two layers inside of this group layer. On the group layer, I went and applied a multiply effect. So this is what it looks like normally, just your typical flat demographic map that doesn't care at all about terrain. Well, now it does. It shows you where the local small mountain range is. And then the other effect we wanted to apply, or at least try out, was on the zip code layer itself. I select the zip code layer, I go over to effects, what happens if we turn on a drop shadow? And now we get to see, yeah, there's kind of a nice little visual effect there. This starts to look like an island lifting up off the water, right? And that's kind of nice. You know, what I really like is how it extends your color options for your subject matter. You know, these are very soft pastel-y colors. So is my base map water. It's a nice soft color. This just adds a little bit of an edge to it. So I can definitely see those land areas popping off the map now. And I like that. And then lastly, I wanted to show, um, I have a layer out there. You can see its name here. And uh, it is all the census blocks which have zero population. And when you add that to the map, um, you can kind of see how it lays on top of this. And if I blend it the right way, Um, we've got a destination atop blend going on. Oh, I know what it is. We can take the drop shadow off of this layer and put, see, put that drop shadow on the entire layer. So check that out now. Let's kind of tidy this up a little bit. By applying the drop shadow, instead of on the zip code layer, move it up here to the group layer now only the incorporated or the populated areas of the map really shine through, right? Here's the before, just your typical polygon choropleth map that kind of presents as if there's this one big continuous surface of diversity. And then when you actually factor in Portland Airport, this island is uninhabited, half this island evidently is uninhabited, you can kind of see some of the built environment having an effect on diversity patterns um, throughout the city. And that's, uh, that's kind of a cool effect. I really like this layer. Um, we're trying to do an update to that layer right now, as a matter of fact, and make that available for the 2020 census.